Hello, uh, I'm Dr. Ben White, and I teach Biblical Studies at the King's College. Uh, today I'm reading from one of my favorite authors, G.K. Chesterton, and specifically his book Man Alive, which was one of my favorite books in undergrad. Uh, the book traces a rather wild and amusing story of a man named Innocent Smith, who's accused of a variety of different crimes, including breaking and entering, uh, but in succession he's found to be innocent of each of these crimes, including breaking and entering into his own house uh, in order to discover what's good about what he has uh, and to find gratitude in the midst of the ordinary and the normal. Uh, so I'm reading here from an account uh, of a bystander and his interactions with Innocent Smith as he gives thoughts about the importance of home and the sense of place. Something in the word pilgrim awoke down in the roots of my ruinous experience memories of what my fathers had felt about the world, and of something from whence I came. I looked again at the little pictured lantern at which I had not looked for fourteen years. My grandmother, I said in a low tone, would have said that we were all in exile, and that no earthly house could cure the holy homesickness that forbids us rest. He was silent a long while, here they're referring to Innocent Smith, and watched a single eagle drift out beyond the green finger into the darkening void. Then Smith said, I think your grandmother was right, and stood up leaning on his grassy pole. I think that must be the reason, he said, the secret of this life of man, so ecstatic and so unappeased. But I think there is more to be said. I think God has given us the love of special places, of a hearth and of a native land, for a good reason. I dare say, I said, what reason? Because otherwise, he said, pointing his pull out at the sky and the abyss, we might worship that. What do you mean, I demanded. Eternity, he said in his harsh voice, the largest of the idols, the mightiest of the rivals of God. You mean pantheism and infinity and all that, I suggested. I mean, he said with increasing vehemence, that if there be a house for me in heaven, it will either have a green lamppost and a hedge, or something quite as positive and personal as a green lamppost and a hedge. I mean that God bade me love one spot and serve it, and do all things however wild in praise of it, so that this one spot might be a witness against all the infinities and the sophistries, that paradise is somewhere and not anywhere, is something and not anything. And I would not be so very much surprised if the house in heaven had a real green lamppost after all. So wherever you are, whether you're alone or with family or friends, uh, I can imagine that if you're still healthy, uh, and I hope you are, uh, that a certain sense of cabin fever and boredom is settling in. It's easy to take for granted the things that we have, but I think we need to resist the irony of staying home to save other people's lives while we despair of our own. And so like Innocent Smith, uh, like G.K. Chesterton, I think we need to fight for joy, and perhaps one of the ways we can do that is by trying to break out of the ordinary routine, see things from a different angle, break into your own home.